Um, first, I want to thank the organizers who uh, gave me this opportunity to, uh, to give a talk at this conference because I'll be talking about something that is very dear to my heart, um, and that is uh, my outreach involvement with different programs that I have been running since 2007. Um, while I was in the previous institution at University of South Dakota, I found it and ran with uh, my um, colleague, Clea Wagner, for three years, an outreach program for high school girls from the surrounding area, and, um, which we called my, the Mad Days for Women. And the idea was um, we invited the high school students, high school girls, it was for girls, um, for a whole day of activities at our school, and we tried to do uh, hands-on activity, discovery, inquiry, questions, uh, ask, uh, uh, asking questions, for them to ask questions. And then um, when I moved to my, um, my uh, current institution at Utah Valley University, I wanted to start, a, of course, outreach program because I really uh, like doing this. But I also wanted to involve the undergraduate students. So I didn't want it just to work with, uh, with the high school students, uh, but I really wanted to, uh, to involve uh, our undergraduate students. So I founded um, an, another outreach program, which we called Mad Girls Rock. Uh, we, and we, we have been running with my colleague, Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Hamilton, for uh, three years already. And um, we, we did different structure this time. So uh, we go to the high schools, we do after school, uh, um, after school programs, we work with the high schools, uh, high, uh, high school students, and again, they're uh, female students, and um, do some activities with them. But before we go to the schools, we go twice a year, uh, I'm sorry, twice a semester, so four times per year. Before we go to the high schools for these after uh, school uh, programs, we work for five weeks with, the, uh, with uh, three of the undergraduate students which we hire and pay them to work on this program. So we develop with them this uh, these uh, projects and then we go to the high schools and then the undergraduate students mentor and work with the high school students. So during these five weeks, we mentor the undergraduate students how to ask questions, how to uh, work with the undergraduate students, how to inquire them to ask questions. And then they will, we, we go to the high schools and then the undergraduate students imply what they, they've learned and work with the high school's uh, uh, students. And um, also I've been um, doing this kind of uh, similar workshops with this kind of activities um, in, an, uh, in another venues. Um, I was invite, invited in Park City Mathematical Institute in 2012 to, to do a workshop with the origami, so I did that one. Actually, they invited me this year, but I will be in Europe in that time, so. Um, and then um, I also did the workshop with uh, Girls Retreat or Wisdom Conference, uh, or work with the high school girls, um, and they actually did discovery and um, hands-on activities with computer using GeoGebra and um, designing arts using mathematics. So um, the goals on each of these uh, projects that I'm doing is, um, of course, to engage students in guided hands-on discovery activities and uh, to demonstrate them that math is fun, interesting, and uh, exciting, to expose them to math that they have not seen before. Um, to excite them with new ideas and to, uh, to, uh, to make them curious about, uh, uh, about uh, stuff and truths. Then to increase their self-confidence in their own math abilities and to encourage high school and also undergraduate students to further study mathematics. But also with the Mad, uh, Mad Goes Rock, we also, because we have uh, other components there, uh, we, uh, we have the components of, and the goal is to mentor the undergraduate students and then them to mentor the high school students and then to promote the value of college education and to encourage them to, uh, to consider professions that utilize uh, uh, a math degree. Well, um, short, in a short, what do we want with this project? Um, uh, if you, if you uh, attended the Mark Starbert talk, um, whatever he said, that's what we want. Uh, we want the student to ask questions. We want them to be curious, to be persistent, to explore and discover, to make conjecture, to learn. All of this we want uh, to, to, uh, to accomplish in these uh, projects. Um, I will try to address the first one, coloring on different surfaces and uh, go in more details with this project um, in this talk, and then um, talk a little bit about uh, truncated polyhedra and origami vacuumals and graph coloring, uh, depending on the time that I have. I never know how much I can stretch. Um, 
The origami buckyballs and graph coloring is based on an um, origami project from Tom Ho's book, so, um, and it's very popular, and I have used it in a, lo a lot of time, and I think in uh, each of the uh, venues that I mentioned, I've used uh, uh, this project. The coloring of different surfaces is one that um, I used it for the first time this past year or, um, with Matt Ghost Rock, and it has a very um, high level of acceptance from the high school students. Apparently, high school girls, they love coloring. So that was, that was really surprising for us, too. Um, and then um, in the fall, we did truncated polyhedra. That was also a new one that I haven't done before. So coloring on different surfaces, what we did, with, uh, the, objectives were to, uh, the objectives for us was for students to learn various coloring theorems. And then uh, to learn about vertex coloring, so we did some uh, graph theory and application in scheduling problems. And then to perform various hands-on activities with coloring on different surfaces, so not just on plane, but also on a sphere, Mobius band, torus. And then, um, we also connected with, uh, with origami and two colorability of uh, a flat foldable uh, origami. So um, all of this we wanted to incorporate in, um, in this uh, project. And, and we wanted for students to see how they're all connected and how everything follows or connects with uh, everything that we have talked before. And um, so how the, the project was, uh, was structured, we started with um, introducing the uh, two color theorem. So we gave them examples of various, various examples with lines drawn and, um, uh, for them to color and to see how many, uh, what is the minimum uh, number of colors that they can use that they, that, that they will color the region such that not two adjacent regions will be covered with the same color. And I also asked them, okay, so if you don't believe us that we gave examples that will work for two color, why don't you draw various lines and see what happens and how many uh, colors you can use. So we let them just explore and see what happens. And um, then compare what, what uh, everyone has drawn, how they can draw, and how many colors everyone needed. So we gave them some time, and uh, I mean, it doesn't take a lot to say that you, you just need two colors for this. So that was kind of, well, okay, you need two colors. Okay, let's conjecture that. And then um, we also give them on purpose this, uh, this pattern because we wanted to, to talk about uh, origami after that, and this is the crease pattern of a crane. So they also color it, and they saw that it's too color, uh, colorable. Um, and uh, we talked a little bit that, um, you remember you, previously you draw lines that goes to infinity, so if we look at this, this is my new gadget, so um, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to use it. Um, so this we can imagine as a line that they're not really a line, but they're approximately a line, and we talked about homomorphism later, so we came back and explained that they're homomorphic to lines, so. Um, and then we, um, we uh, discussed about the two-color map, because after they did the, the, the conjecture, we said, great, now you discover one of the theory mathematics. That's a two-color map theorem. And we talked about, uh, the undergraduate student talked about the two-color map theorem with them and discussed it. Um, and then the next question was, okay, so now uh, we know, uh, you saw that this works if you draw lines. Now what happens if we take this line and make uh, a closed curve? What will happen? Will that happen again? So if you take closed curves, intersect them, um, will, how many cars do you need to color these regions? So they, again, all of them draw closed curves and uh, start uh, coloring, and um, they, they saw that also do you need two colors. So they said, oh, great. So we can generalize a two-color theorem that not using just, two, uh, just lines, but we can just use uh, any closed curve that intersects, and um, the same result holds for that. And then uh, we gave them to make um, um, origami crane, but we also, in the package that, that we gave them, we, um, we have prepared crane because we weren't sure if all of them will succeed to make origami crane the way we wanted to, uh, to be successful when they start coloring. And then uh, we asked them, um, now take the, the model crane and color it such that every region that looks toward you, color it with, uh, with one color. 
and then do not color the, 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 the regions that are on the opposite side. So, um, and I forgot to color this one, so I apologize. So after they colored everything, um, uh, so everything that faces you, one color, everything that faces me, uh, another color, when, uh, when you open the crease pattern, guess what happens? It's too colorable, right? So um, all of them did that and they discovered, and, and at some point, at some point they, they realized, wait a minute, we did color this pattern before. So they go back and say, oh, this is the one that was too colorful. So then now we made the crane and it's the same thing. So it's kind of connection, discover, logical thinking, all of that. And um, when, uh, when we get to this point, I mean, when they get to this point, this is where they, they realize that they, they have already colored this, that they just discovered. And then um, we give them as an open question, um, will this happen for, um, before that we, dis, we, uh, we talked that this, uh, oops, this is a flat origami model. So we discuss that and then we ask uh, and leave them as an open question, um, will this um, happen for every flat origami model? Can you two color every flat origami model? Um, I ask them to do, um, to go home and to make some flat origami models, open them, color them, and see what happens. Uh, but I also ask them to do, um, and I, I'm not sure if in the project the, the undergraduate student discussed, but, um, or I, I just, we just leave them to, uh, to them to discuss, um, to, dis to see what happens with the angles around each vertex and why that happens. So by now, when we, when we ask why this would happen, most of them, they already realize that um, around each vertex, you have even number of regions. So you can use just two colors to color them without two regions. That, I mean, they have different ideas, but most of them, they realize that this even number of regions around each vertex plays a huge role in this. Uh, as I said in my abstract, we. We asked them, the students, to conjecture their discovery and discuss their findings with the group and with us. We don't ask them to prove anything. Um, and then, um, and then we, we, we went to uh, more complicated uh, maps or, crisp, uh, or patterns on, um, to draw. So we give them these patterns, and um, the question was, again, what is the minimum number of color that you can use to color this, uh, these maps without coloring two regions adjacent to, uh, to each other with the same color. Um, and then, of course, they realize that uh, you need three colors here, you need four colors here. But the question after that was, okay, so, if so, uh, if so for some of them you need three colors, for some of them you need four colors, can you tell me when that will happen and why? And then they start discussing between themselves um, in realizing that, again, you have um, a region in the center, and then around it you have even number of regions, so you, you can use the, uh, the three colors because this region and the outer region can be a uh, color with the same color, and then they will realize here that this region, oh, this region can be colored with the same color as this one because it doesn't touch it. So it's, it's a whole discussion and um, different ideas and um, uh, how, how, how you have done. And uh, so there were uh, students who would start uh, coloring uh, with different colors, but without realizing that they will, uh, they will need to use this color the same as the outside color, so they will go back and redo the project. And they liked it because it was coloring, and apparently they love coloring, so it, <laughs> it, it was great. And then the next part of the project was discussion of separation of plane. The idea was for them to discover the, uh, the four color uh, map theorem, so we start looking at maps, but we also wanted for them to see that um, the, four, the four color theor uh, map theorem will, uh, will apply to maps with some restrictions. So that's why uh, we had a question to discuss and realize that the separation of a plane to contiguous, uh, uh, contiguous regions uh, will play a role here. So uh, we gave them this example, and uh, by the way, the, the name of the regions the, the countries are our names, just change. <laughs> so, um, we have Caroline, Sydney, uh, Sydney Christine, Emily, and uh, Megan, and of 
course, me. Um, and we gave the map, and by now you realize that um, I'm from Macedonia, so it's a center of universe, right? <laughs> so uh, they did the coloring, and then um, they have a discussion why here in this uh, map they needed uh, more than uh, four colors, but for this one they needed four colors to color it. And um, then we did all of this discussion about restrictions and why do you think that happens, when it won't happen. Um, and then um, the, the, the conjecture was that, well, probably all maps uh, can be colored with four colors. And after that, the, uh, the, after the students made, um, after all of these examples, they made the conjecture that uh, every map on the plane can be colored with four colors. Um, the student, the undergrad student, discussed the, uh, the uh, four color uh, map theorem and the history and the, the proof and uh, because it's an interesting story, um, they discussed the, the, uh, with the high school students. The next step was uh, to compare. So after they discover the two color theory, they discover the four color theory, they discover how the two, color, uh, the, the two colorability with flat origami uh, models is connected, we went on and talked about homomorphic shapes, actually. We let them discover the homomorphic shapes. So we gave the map and we gave um, the, the, uh, the pattern that we have before and um, asked them, what can you tell me about this? How, how they are connected? Do you see any connection between them? What do you, what do you think about them? Um, and of course, I mean, there were different um, uh, thinking and discussion between, oops, I'm sorry. As I said, it's a new gadget, so I don't know how to deal with it. Um, so we have discussion that, oh, well, we color both of them with four colors, so that's the similarity. Okay, that's the similarity, but what else? So finally, they realized that, um, the map can be represented with this diagram. And of course, if you take, for example, Macedonia in the center and then Kosovo and Serbia and Montenegro, et cetera, um, you can represent this map with this crease pattern. And then um, after they did that, they, they realized that, oh, they're very similar. So why they are similar? So if you imagine that you have the borders with rubber and extend that and make it, and we we did all of the discussion for them to discuss, to, to to realize that we are talking now about topology, another uh, topic in mathematics, and this is part of uh, what topology is doing. And then uh, we connected with graph theory. So we went to graph coloring. How? What other connections we can make? And then uh, we talked about dual graphs. So um, the pattern that we have, and I won't go, um, we, ta uh, uh, we, we have a guided questions for them to construct a dual graph taking a vertex to be each of the region of the map. So now we can take this map because it's a homeomorphic with the other one, it's the same with the other one, and then connect regions that are adjacent. So you form, oops, so you form the a dual graph, and then we, uh, we ask them to color the vertices such that not two vertices that are connected color with the same color, et cetera, et cetera. So they discovered that now coloring map is actually a problem of coloring of this dual, a vertex coloring of this dual map. So we connect it with graph theory and we tell them how to, how to do it. So they, they discovered the four color theory for planar graphs. Um, and then we went, um, on to uh, talk about um, coloring on different surfaces. So um, we have the sphere, and uh, I, I need to apologize, I have uh, more stuff to bring, but uh, I was coming back on uh, Wednesday from Kansas City and my flight was delayed, so it was too late to go to school to take the, the stuff, so I just brought what I have at home, so I, I do apologize for that. Um, we asked them to, to, uh, to discuss um, what about if we have these maps on, not on, uh, in plane, but what happens on a sphere? Uh, and we have various discussion, and it was really fun to listen to, to students to see, oh, it's kind of curved, so I don't know, do we need more or less? What do you think? I think more, no, I think less. And so we let them discuss that and uh, see what happens. And I don't think so that any of them conjectured that the, you need four colors is the same. I, I don't believe that anyone discussed, but then the, the undergrad students had this um, uh, foam balls, and we have the map of the uh, Balkan Peninsula drawn on, uh, on this kind of uh, fabric, 
and uh, we have the threat in which. So they show that, well, let's see what happens if we have this ball and we have this map and then with the threat, this went around the ball. I said, look what happens. And keep in mind a homomorphism, so it's almost the same and blah, blah, blah. And these, oh, we need the same number of colors because the map can go in the sphere. And so uh, we, we led them to, to conclude that you do need four colors to, to, for the spheres, for the plane to, to, to do the coloring. And then we went on the Mobius band. So um, we let them explore first with diagrams and a map on a, uh, on a rectangle and do, um, can you tell me how much it is? And then um, to realize that when you take this and, uh, and make the Mobius band, you probably one, uh, cannot make it with four colors. So they start guessing, oh, do you need four? Do you need five? I mean, you probably don't need, I mean, you need more than four, but do you need five, do you need six? And, um, and then we gave them this. So they need to analyze these models. When, uh, when they start analyzing these models, they realize that um, you do need six colors to color it because we have a map that requires six colors. So they kind of discover that um, for, to, to color Mobius band, you need six colors and, and also the, I mean, the discussion that they have, oh, it's kind of curvy, it's not like a plane, but, but it's like a plane, but it's not. So they had all of them. it was really fun, it was really fun. Um, and um, our students made uh, Mobius band earrings also, so, the, uh, and colored differently, so it was really fun. And then we went to, um, again, discussion for a torus, um, and they realized that they need seven colors um, we have this uh, foam uh, toruses, uh, and we, we drone the map, and then we give them to the high school girls. And each of them, so the first one will color one region, the second one will color another region, and trying to see if you need different colors or the same colors. So they, reala they realize that you need seven colors to, to color this. So the contractor was, oh, probably need seven colors to do. Um, anyway, but, but also the discussion was, oh, look here, we have very much, it's not like the sphere. We have curving for the sphere, but also curving here. So what happens? Oh, we need more colors. Um, and um, we have these models also for them to explore, um, et cetera. And then um, these are some survey results that we have um, from them, um, and which I really liked. And I put some of them that um, they like. As I said, they like the color coloring, and they enjoyed the whole thing. Um, and um, they learn. <laughs> They really like the topology part a lot. And then the truncated tetrahedra, we did, uh, we based, th this was the objective to learn about platonic solids, discover the Euler theorem uh, formula for, uh, for polyhedra, and then we talked about Archimedean uh, solids, all of this we discovered in leading them to ask questions and to, uh, to, to lead through this, and then um, uh, they, uh, we talked about uh, mostly about uh, truncated tetrahedra and uh, what happens, but we also did the, the dua dual ones and they really love the duals. That if you take um, a, tet a tetrahedra and then you, you make the dual of the tetrahedra, you get the, um, uh, the octahedra, the, uh, the icosahedra, am I correct, pronounced correctly? <laughs> And then if you take the, the dual of that, you get the, uh, not the tetra, the cube, I'm sorry, cube, uh, icosahedra, and then cube, and icosahedra, so they, they uh, like that. But the, at the end, what we did, and uh, in their survey, they point out uh, many times, we did the, uh, because this was before, uh, in the fall semester before Christmas, we made Christmas ornaments. They needed to use the property that we discovered about the truncated uh, polyhedra to make Christmas ornaments. So they needed to, to make sure that they have the vertices, how many faces, how many edges, on all of them to construct this. So they used the math that, we, that they learned to construct these um, ornaments. And um, I, I forgot to mention that we make the bracelets, Taurus bracelets, with them also too. Um, but with this project, with the truncated tetrahedra, um, we, we told them, we didn't did it, uh, we didn't did it in, um, during the project, but we told them at home that they can make their own jewelry using these things. Am I out? Okay. 
the survey results that um, they really like the different methods that we use for them uh, that they haven't uh, used in uh, in class that they want to think they made them think outside of uh, of box at uh, outside of textbook and um, oh well I'll just leave it to that thank you. <laughs> Robert Mendez, University of Houston. Um, did, you, did you ever give them the services and have them explore trying to produce a maximal, I mean, a, a map that has the most colors? Or did you start by saying, here's Mobius Strip that happens to have this diagram on it? Uh, for each of them, we started the discussion. Um, what do you think will happen if we take this surface? Uh, we didn't go in that kind of detail just because we have just two hours and we need to go through all of this. So we kind of try to have the discussion before to see if they can uh, realize if we need more or less, the same number of colors, but uh, we basically give them to explore maps that we have prepared for them after we have the discussion. With two hours, you can't really <laughs> do more. Let's thank Violetta one more time. Thank you.